Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at several examples of solving linear equations and their applications. In our first example, we want to solve 5x minus 7 times in parentheses 4 plus x close parenthesis equals 2x plus 16. So first we want to clean up the left hand side as much as possible. So first I'm going to distribute the negative 7. So we'll have 5x minus 28 minus 7x equals 2x plus 16. We still have uh, more cleanup to do on the left-hand side. We have a 5x and a negative 7x. When we combine those, that would be negative 2x minus 28 equals 2x plus 16. Now I'll simultaneously add 28 to both sides and also subtract 2x uh, from both sides. And the reason I'll do that is to move all of the variable terms to the left-hand side and all the constants to the right-hand side. Negative 2x minus 2x is negative 4x. 16 plus 28 is 44. Now to get x by itself, I'll divide both sides by negative 4. And we end up with x equals negative 11. If I wanted to ensure my answer was correct, I could plug it in for x. Anywhere I see an x, I could plug in negative 11 and make sure that whatever value I have on the left-hand side matches the value on the right-hand side. So I'll check this one, and probably this will be the only one I'm actually going to check. But you can always do this, and that will just help you verify that you do have the right answer. So we're going to replace x with negative 11 minus 7 times 4 plus negative 11. And we want to make sure that equals, we put a question mark over it because we're not positive, 2 times negative 11 plus 16. Well, 5 times negative 11 is negative 55. Inside parentheses, 4 plus negative 11 is negative 7. Um, then we would do multiplication, since that comes before subtraction in order of operations or addition. Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. Negative 55 plus 49 is negative 6. Let's make sure we end up with that on the left-hand side, as, or the right-hand side as well. 2 times negative 11 is negative 22, and negative 22 plus 16 is negative 6. We'll just put it in the white so it's a little bit easier to read. We end up with negative 6 equals negative 6, so I feel pretty confident that x equals negative 11 is in fact the right answer. In our next example, we see linear equation, but this time we do have fractions. If we want to clear out the fractions, what we can do is we can determine what the least common denominator is and rewrite each term to have that least common denominator. Since we have denominators of 3, 2, and 4, the least common multiple of 3, 2, and 4 would be 12. It's okay if you don't think of the least common multiple. If you think of 24 instead, that's going to work too. Not a problem. We'll use 12 since it will be the smallest. So what we're going to do, we have three terms. This is one term, two terms, three terms. We're going to rewrite each term so they all have this denominator of 12. For 2 thirds times m, I need to multiply by 4 over 4. For 1 half, I need to multiply by 6 over 6. And for this term, remember the m minus 2 would just be part of the numerator, so it would be like 1 times m minus 2 and then we would need to multiply by 3. So this would give me 8m over 12 plus 6 over 12 plus 3 times m minus 2 over 12. Oh, y plus equals. Now what I can do is I can multiply every single thing, this is the multiplication property of equality, by 12. And when I distribute the 12, it's going to cancel out all these denominators, leaving me with just the numerators, 8m plus 6 equals 3 times m minus 2. This time I need to clean up the right hand side, so I would have 8m plus 6 equals 3m minus 6. Now I'm going to move all the variable terms to the left hand side, so I'm going to subtract 3m from both sides. And I'm also going to subtract 6 from both sides to move the constants to the right hand side. 8m minus 3m is 5m. And then over here negative 6 minus 6 is tw uh, negative 12. To get m totally, utterly, and completely by itself, I would need to divide both sides by 5. When I divide both sides by 5, I end up with negative 12 over 5. Fine to leave it like that. Or you can write it as a mixed number. That would be negative 2 and 2 over 5. Or you can write it as a decimal. It would be negative 2.4. Any of those three should be just totally acceptable. Now we're going to look at some applications of linear equations. In our first application, Frida has a total of $15,000 to invest. She invests part of the money into an account that pays 2.5% interest, and the rest into an account that pays 4% interest. The combined interest in the first year is $502.50, so 
So we wanna know how much did she invest in each account? These problems can be really tricky. I find it's most helpful to set up a table. So in the table, I see we have this total here. So I want a total of money invested. So I'm gonna say money invested, and that's gonna be one of my rows. And then we'll set this up and there we go. Lovely, oh, sorry. Oh, don't erase the whole thing, oh well. Okay, so I know I have a total column, so all the way over here, I'm gonna write total. And what I know is that the total invested was $15,000. So we're gonna say 15,000. And we'll fill in the rest in just a second. She invests part of the money into an account that pays 2.5% interest and the rest into an account that pays 4% interest. So we have two accounts where she has this money invested. So we have a 2.5% account. We'll say account and a 4% account. Now those percents don't matter right now uh, because the percents are talking about the interest earned on these accounts. So when we're talking about the money that she invested, we would say, okay, well she invested, we can use T or X and Y. I use T just because two starts with T and then I would use F here. So the total amount she put at 2.5% plus the total amount she put at 4% would equal the total amount invested. Now the other thing that we're interested in based on the fact that we do have these percents and we haven't done anything with them yet is we're interested in the interest. So now we wanna learn, see what information we have about the interest earned. Interest earned. Okay, and maybe we have a total amount of interest earned. We do, it's right here. So our total for interest will be $502.50. Now the way we fill in this part, and this is the tricky part, so the interest earned on the account that pays 2.5% is 2.5% of however much she has in there. Well, how, we don't know how much she has in there, we called it T. So when we set this up, we say 0.05T, because when we use percents in problems, we can't actually use them in percent form, we must convert to a decimal or fraction. So the interest earned in the account that pays 2.5% interest would be 0.025 times T. The amount of interest that she would earn at 4% would be 0.5%. 0, 04 times F. And this kind of gives us our two equations. So we have one total equation is T plus F equals 15,000. And another one would be 0 0.025 T plus 0 0.04 times F equals 502 and 50 cents. Now from here, we can either use elimination or substitution. Either way, I do suggest getting rid of the decimals in the second equation. So what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for the decimal that has the least place. This five is in the thousandths place. This four is in the hundredths place. The zero doesn't matter, but it's in the hundredths place. So since there's a five in the thousandths place, I can clear out the decimals by multiplying this entire equation by 1,000. Multiplying it by 1,000 means I'm moving the decimal point three times in each term. So we would have 25t, plus 40F equals 502,500. Okay, so now we still have to either use elimination or substitution. We'll use substitution this time. So to use substitution in this equation up here, I need to get one of the two variables by itself. I will choose to get F by itself. So I'm gonna rewrite this to get F by itself. I would need to subtract both sides by T. So that would be F equals 15,000 minus T. Now that I have F by itself, I can use substitution to plug in the second equation. Anywhere I see an F, I'm replacing it with 15,000 minus T. I'm definitely gonna run out of space, so I'm sorry I put this so centered. So we have 25T plus 40. And I just arbitrarily chose uh, to get F by itself. It, doesn't matter if you get F or T by itself. Either one should produce the same answer. Okay, so now we have just one single variable. I'm gonna use the distributive property, clean up the left-hand side, and then I'll start combining moving constants. So first I need to multiply the 40. 40 times 15,000. We have to be really careful here with the zeros. There's gonna be quite a few zeros. We get 600,000, 600,000. Then I distribute 40 to T and we get minus 40 T and this equals 502,500. 
Now from here, um, I'm going to combine the like terms of the t's, and I'm also going to subtract 600,000 from both sides. 25t and negative 40t is negative 15t. This could be cause for concern, but when I subtract 600,000 from 500, 2,500, I also end up with a negative, so that's good news. We get negative 97,500. Lastly, to get t by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 15. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that's good because we hope that she invested a positive amount of money into this account. And when I divide, I get 6,500. So this tells us that she invested $6,500 in the account that pays 2%. To determine how much she uh, put into the invested in the account that pays 4%, I would substitute in 6,500, and I'm going to plug it in right here in this equation because that already has F by itself. So F is going to be 15,000, the total amount invested, minus the amount she invested at 2.5%. Uh, when I subtract 15,000 by 6,500, I end up with 8,500. So we want to make sure we're clear here. So we're going to say 2.5% account, 6,500, and 4% account, 8,500. And of course, just like with that first example I did, you can always check your work. All right, our next example, Angelo has $5.20 in dimes and quarters. The number of dimes is four fewer than the number of quarters. How many of each coin does he have? Okay, so in this one, we have a total. We only have one total this time. So we know the value of the coins is $5.20. So that's the total value. Now that total value is in regards to the value of the dimes. One dime is worth 10 cents. So we're gonna say 0 0.1, or you can say 0 0.10 if you like that zero there, it doesn't matter. I'll put it there just for fun. And then I'm gonna use D for dimes plus the value of the quarters. A quarter is worth 25 cents. We'd say 0.25 times Q. The number of dimes, so D equals, is four fewer than, so four fewer than means we're taking four away from something. What are we taking some four away from? The number of quarters. Well, she has Q, he has Q quarters, so we Q minus four. This is another nice one to use substitution. So I know D is the same thing as Q minus four. So in the top equation, which I might actually fix, I think I'm gonna multiply by 100 to clear out those decimals. I only need to multiply by 100 because this zero is in the hundredths place, this, this zero is in the hundredths place, and the five is in the hundredths place. So I'll end up with 520 equals 10D plus 25Q. Now in this equation, anywhere I see a D, which is right here, I'm gonna replace it with Q minus four. So that's 520 equals 10 times Q minus four plus 25q. I'm going to clean up the right hand side. That would give me 10q minus 40q plus 25q. I'm going to, whoop, how about just 40 instead of 40q? There we go. Now I'm going to combine the like terms. That's my q's. And I'm going to add 40 to both sides to get the constants together on one side. 520 plus 40 is 560. 10q plus 25q is 35q. And then to get q all by itself, I need to divide both sides by 35. So I'll say divide by 35, divide by 35. Stop it, whoops, sorry. And we end up with q is equal to 16. So this indicates to me we have 16 quarters. How many dimes does that mean we have? Well, remember the dimes were four fewer than the number of quarters, so it'd be 16 minus four there must be 12 dimes. So we're gonna say quarters, 16, dimes, 12. And these are pretty nice to check uh, because it is money and we're pretty good with money. So 16 quarters, that's the equivalent of $4. So that would be $4. And 12 dimes would be the equivalent of $1.20. $4 plus $1.20 gets us back to that 520 that we were told in the problem. So again, I feel pretty good about this, assuming that the equations I set up were correct. Lastly, the sum of three consecutive even numbers is 204. Find the numbers. So for this, when we're talking about consecutive even numbers, we're going to call our first consecutive number. We can call it whatever we want. I'll use x this time. The next consecutive even number would be x plus 2, because we need to skip over the odd number. 
And then the third consecutive even number would be x plus 4, because again, we have that, that odd number in between the two even numbers. So here's my three even numbers, x, and it says their sum, so I'm going to add these three numbers together. So we can see here, this is the first number, this is the second number, this is the third number, and their sum is 204. Now we're going to combine like terms on the left-hand side, x plus x plus x is 3x, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Now we can subtract 6 from both sides, that gives me 3x equals 198, divide both sides by 3, and we end up with x equals 66, looks like it's going to be 66. Okay, so if the first one is, the first number is 66, that means that the next, so we're going to put these, separate them with a comma, 66, 68, and 70. And of course, these are really nice to check. If you add those three numbers up, do you end up with 204? We should. So those are the three numbers.